uh, the biblical text. So, so I don't think it is an easy task to, to arrive at this conclusion. And then we have the problems I mentioned earlier on, that we don't know, even if God is the source of the message, perhaps in the simplistic manner that he decides on the, uh, what to do, like our fathers used to do, we still must be uncertain about the content of this message because we have to compare it with something before we can be certain that it's not from Satan rather than from God. So we have to, I think we, we, we can't get past this necessity of pursuing moral arguments independently as if God is not part of the picture. Um, then, then I was accused of, of being a speciesist, but, but that was a simple misunderstanding because the kind of utilitarianism that I'm advocating doesn't place the human species in a, any special position. Um, it's as bad to torture another animal as it is to torture a human being, according to my uh, moral view. And of course, uh, those who dislike this particular moral stance might, might go to the Bible perhaps to try to find some evidence there, textual evidence there for the position that, that human creatures are special, that, that we are more noble, more, more important from a moral point of view than other species. But I, I don't think that's a good idea really as a Christian to do that because I, I don't think this is a good moral idea. And I think also the textual evidence there is rather weak. I mean, if you... Uh, read Genesis and, and, and uh, have a charitable interpretation of it, uh, I think there is nothing in it that really forces you to uh, this rather stupid, I think, conclusion. So, I mean, and again, you can see that, that you can't really solve questions with reference to the Holy Scripture, with reference to God. And, and the reason might be, I think, that, that God is irrelevant to these kinds of discussion. That, doesn't mean that God doesn't exist. It doesn't mean that God is not an important being. I mean, he is very important if he have, has all those characteristics. But, but we, we are kind of left alone with our moral problems for all that. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Tenkra, uh, Professor Craig. You two have 12 minutes. Okay. Well, let me review those two contentions that I said I was prepared to defend in tonight's debate. First, I argued, you remember, that theism provides a sound foundation for morality. First of all, I said it provides a sound foundation for objective moral values. And here, Professor Tinkru asks, well, where on this chart, then, do you belong? I would belong on number one here, that God provides an ontological foundation for moral values. Moral values are determined by the essential properties of God, such as his being loving, kind, generous, and so forth. I also did defend uh, number three, that uh, moral accountability does provide a morally bracing effect for motivating the moral life. But I wasn't really interested tonight in number two. And you remember I argued that uh, by having moral values rooted in God's nature, it gives them an objective, transcendent foundation that allows you to escape sociocultural relativism. Dr. Chen Shu says, well, but why do you want this kind of God? Well, it's not a matter of my wanting this kind of God. It's a matter of an argument here. It seems to me that in the absence of God, objective moral values, duties, and moral accountability do not exist. I just can't see why we should make this leap of faith and think that on atheism, human beings and their morality is objective. On the other hand, if we do think that we have moral duties and values and accountability, then it follows logically and deductively that therefore such a God exists. So this is the conclusion of an argument, as I explained. He also uh, says that he wants to keep morality self-contained. Well, but far from doing that, it seems to me that his hedonistic utilitarianism or atheistic utilitarianism in the end annihilates morality because far from being self-contained, there just isn't any objective moral value or moral duties or moral accountability on atheism. At least I don't think we've heard any argument tonight to show that there is. Now, secondly, I said that if God exists, there are objective moral duties. 
God's divine commands are constitutive for us of our moral obligations. Dr. Tenshiro says, well, is the will of God right-making? Yes, I think this is correct. What God commands becomes our moral duties. What he forbids are our moral prohibitions, and what he permits then is something that is what he would call right or permissible for us. So you can give it a good account of moral obligation on the basis of divine commands. But notice that they're not arbitrary. Uh, unlike William Ockham's voluntarism, I'm arguing, as Aquinas and others did, that these are rooted in the moral nature of God themselves, and so these are not arbitrary commands. Dr. Tenshiro says, well, are you making a meaning claim, reducing moral language to the language of divine commands? No. My argument is not an argument about moral semantics. I'm not giving a meaning claim about the meaning of moral duties. Rather, I'm giving an ontological foundation for moral duties. Where do our moral duties come from? Why do we have these obligations? Because we have been commanded by a holy and loving God to do these things. Thirdly, I argued that uh, if God exists, moral accountability exists because God holds us responsible for our moral actions, and this gives our moral lives great significance, and he did not respond to that point. So I think it's evident in tonight's debate that if theism is true, it does furnish a sound foundation for moral values, moral duties, and moral accountability. Now the question is, what about atheism? Can atheism do as well? Well, I argued first that if atheism is true, there's no objective moral values. There's no reason to think that human happiness uh, is good on atheism. Now, Dr. Tenshiro says, well, evolution doesn't undercut the existence of objective values. I, I grant that point. That would be to commit the genetic fallacy. Uh, but that's not my argument. Rather, what I'm arguing is that without God, there's simply no reason to think that the happiness of this particular species is good or has this moral property of goodness. I just don't see any reason to think that on an atheistic view, this species is anything special. Now, uh, he says, but on my view, human species is not in fact special. I'm talking about any sort of pleasure whatsoever. But I think in saying that, he has, he has yielded uh, the floor in a sense to me because you see what that means is that it makes it even more dubious that pleasure is the source or the locus of moral goodness. And remember that on that view then, these extraterrestrials raping throughout the earth could be justified because it would so increase the maximum amount of pleasure in the universe that that would be permitted. In other words, his view really does lead to everything being permitted because uh, you can construct scenarios like extraterrestrial rape in which the amount of pleasure in the universe would be increased and therefore everything could be justified and permitted. So it seems to me there's just no reason to think on atheism that human happiness is good. Now I want to underscore this by something that he says in his book on moral realism. He makes the very interesting claim that a mental state of mind having the property of goodness is distinct from its having the property of being pleasurable. These are not identical. Moreover, he says, there are possible worlds in which the same mental state has the property of being pleasurable, but it does not have the property of being morally good. Now, in that case, that means it is contingent that this mental state has the property of being morally good, and therefore it cries out for an explanation. Why is this pleasurable mental state morally good on atheism? It's not necessary, it's contingent. There has to be a reason why this mental state being pleasurable should be identified or, or should have the property of moral goodness. And I simply cannot think of any answer on atheism, and we haven't been given one. But then an even deeper problem surfaces, I think. Notice that on his view, it is the mental state that has the property of being good, not the person. In other words, it's the the mental state which the person has that has the property of goodness, not the person who has the mental state. On his view, persons turn out to have no intrinsic value whatsoever, which to me seems just morally counterintuitive uh, and uh, just underlines the inadequacy of this atheistic utilitarianism. So 
In short, I really honestly don't see any reason to think that on atheism we should identify 